What is up, guys? What is up? We are live. It's Facebook time. And we're going to have some fun right now because people are on my nerves. And when people get on my nerves, I get on here and I rant to you guys to bring some sanity into this world of craziness. And that's what we're doing tonight. <clears throat> so it's late for my East Coast people, but you guys can catch this tomorrow. For my West Coast people, we're going to hop on here live. Warning, warning, warning. This stream is not for the faint of heart. This stream is about to get raw real quick because I can't stand BS. I have very little tolerance for hot garbage. Mark, what up? The email's coming right now. Richard, what up? So here we go. Per usual, the universe brings me what I need to hear. The universe brings it to me. And <laughs> this is the way the world works. Everything out here, I can't even, uh, let me compose myself. Let me see. Okay. Here's the situation. This week was a good week and an interesting week and a fun week. As you guys know, the free MCAT webinar is coming up this Saturday. And then uh, the following weekend, we're going to have a free uh, medical school application webinar. Uh, so that'll be fun next week. So that'll start happening. Uh, the first announcement will go out actually during the MCAT webinar. So you guys get first chance to enroll. And the application webinar will be a smaller webinar so we can have more chance to interact. But anyway, here's what happened. As you guys know, two months ago, we had the issue of people returning courses or protesting the charges. And the credit card company tried to block me. Well, this week, I was... A great day today because I just won um, my mediation case and uh, essentially what happened, this is now the third time this has happened, but these, the, the, the title of this video is your payment advisors know what they're talking about. They don't. They absolutely do not. And you guys, it's easy because you're bombarded by people who say they know what they're talking about. You're bombarded by medical students. You're bombarded by faculty members. You're bombarded by your advisor, your counselor at your school who think they know what's up. Or worse, they know they don't know what's up, but they want to sound smart. And it's the exact reason I hate studentdoctor.net, and it's the exact same reason I really don't like YouTube. And that's why I like to go live on Facebook, because there's a level of commitment you guys have to have to follow my Facebook, to come on here and have your real name on here. On YouTube, it's just like studentdoctor.net, anonymity breeds liars because it's easy to say stuff when you think you can hide in the shadows when you think nobody can find you and the reason i bring this up and we're gonna go a lot of different directions with this real quick like but the very first reason i bring this up is because today i just found out i wanted mediation a fat settlement against this individual who was trying to knock off my study course and essentially what they did was they enrolled in my course a couple months ago and they tried to duplicate my course on a website so I was like no 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 no. we're gonna shut that down real quick and it was funny and it was interesting because there was a comment the reason I found out about it was because one of my students said hey this seems eerily similar to what you're doing and I heard about it from a friend of mine and I was like that sounds just like Dr. Pine said it turns out this person was trying to roll out my course on their website uh, but they, you know, they got busted. So what was interesting about it was that this person tried to put it out there. And the reason that my student found out about it was because a student tried to take the course and was like, it's all mumble jumbled and it's not well explained and it's whatever. And that happened today. So I'm excited about that. That's retribution for people trying to be knockoff artists, knockoff artists. Additionally, I got a message, right? All this stuff comes together. So this happens this evening. Earlier this morning, I get a message on Instagram from one of these so-called expert pre-med advisors who was like, hey, so Brent said every time, yeah, so that's why I told you guys not to search Jack Weston. Once you search it, he's on you with the ads. But here's what happens. I get a message today. And I won't even say who the person is, right? Because everybody does their own thing. It's up to you guys to decide what's real and what's not. But I get a, a message today on Instagram from one of your guys' so-called experts who has like 100 million billion followers on Instagram. And this character is like, hey, 
I want to reach out to you because I want to do a course about getting into medical school because I think it would be awesome to have that. But then I realized that you already have that course and I, and I enrolled in your course. So you enrolled in my course a month ago and he's like, it's great. Would you mind if I did a similar course and we could partner together and you could teach me right, what you put in there and then I could put it to my voice and then I could release it out there and I could pay you a fee to do it. And what was interesting about this is that <laughs> you guys comment on this stuff. So I have a thing set up where I get flagged anytime someone mentions my name online. So on his YouTube channel, someone said, hey, Dr. Pinesett uh, says that this is different. And then he responded to that student who said, Dr. Pinesett said this and said, no, that's not true. Dr. Pinesett doesn't know what they're talking about. And the same guru messages as me, but he doesn't know that I know who he is and that he said that about me, right? So as soon as he messaged me this, I went into the search and I found that. So what's interesting is this guy claims to be a guru. And this guy's going to talk trash and tell me, I don't know what I'm talking about on his YouTube channel. Yet the same character is trying to ask if he can bootleg my course and sell it off to other students as his own and pay me a fee to do so. Think about that. This is you guys supporting these jokers on YouTube and on social media. That's why I can't stand social media. Because anybody, any dimwit can set up a YouTube channel and get on there and talk for three minutes about something they just stole from somebody else. It's not hard to sound smart for three minutes. And what's interesting is if you ask any of these people to talk for 10 minutes, they can't. If you ask any of these people to put together a course, they can't. And people always say, oh, well, how come you have courses? Other people don't have courses, they just do a YouTube channel. I say, because that's all they got is a YouTube channel. Because no one would pay them a nickel because once the first person bought a course, they'd be so outraged and so upset that the website would go down. And it's all this stuff that circulates that I can't stand. And so today, I want to make two points that are very clear. The first is, is what happened today and all this stuff coming together reminded me of the studentdoctor.net thread that's entitled, you guys can look it up later, it's called Dr. Pinesett's Pre-Med Courses. And it's from last summer and one of my students again showed me this. And what's interesting is someone says, hey, listen, I was thinking about getting Dr. Pines' five pillars course of studying, but I don't know, 500 bucks seems like a lot to learn how to study, right? And then they go on on here, and this one guy said, paying $500 for a study course is ridiculous, it's a waste of money. And uh, they go on here, and the same person says, um, let's see, he said, I spent, I'm going to read off exactly what he said, I think it's important, because this is the kind of ish that I hate about StreamDoctor.net. He says... I said it was free information that's floating around somewhere on the web. So he's saying my, all my courses are available readily on the web, that you can just get this information. It just falls from the trees right into your lap. I never said it could be easily found in five hours or less. All information, even everything you need to learn in medical school can be found online in textbooks without having to pay uh, $200,000 in, in tuition. Uh, we pay for the information to be better packaged and easier to access. Dr. Pinesett's courses are no different than college courses, med school courses in that regard. He says... 43% of matriculating students didn't spend on any money on prep materials, which means 57% of the students did. So let me rewind that. His argument on StudentDoctor.net is that he didn't spend a single penny on any sort of preparation to learn about medical school, to study for the MCAT. And his argument is that the statistics show that 43% of students have never spent a single nickel on any sort of prep. Now, if I were to ask you guys, does that sound like a true statistic? 43% of students who apply to medical school use no sort of prep at all. So they just take the MCAT. They've never seen an MCAT book. They just roll up to the MCAT and take the MCAT. How many of you guys think that's true? Okay, <laughs> so that's what he says. He says, I haven't spent a penny. Then the following sentence, he said, look, I haven't spent a single dollar on MCAT prep or tutoring. Then he follows that with, besides Dr. Pinesett's cheap $50 course, which I only purchased because I found his free YouTube videos to be highly insightful and entertaining. Ha <laughs> ha 
He says, I haven't spent a single penny. And then he falls at the next sentence, but I bought Dr. Pines' $50 course. And he proceeds in the comments all before to bash and say my courses are a waste of money. And he ends it with 40% of students spend nothing on prep. I spent nothing on prep, but I spent $50 on Dr. Pines' course. And I'm like, all I can do is laugh to keep from crying for these people. This is the kind of stuff that you guys are subjected to. And it's sad. But you guys go on studentdoctor.net and you think that people are going to give you trustworthy advice. It's a joke. Absolutely, Evaristo. It's an absolute joke. Studentdoctor.net is the pits. It's the absolute pits because everyone gets on there and they lie. Nobody is honest. It's like this. If you walk into a test, you take said test. And then you come out, how many people that you know, right? Everyone has that friend. Your friend hasn't cracked the book the whole quarter. Haven't cracked the book the whole quarter. Yet, when you walk out of the test, what do they act like? Oh, ha -ha. yeah, I probably got everything right on that. That was easy. That was nothing. That was nothing. They get test back, it's an F. How many of you guys have friends like that? Every test, they're like, oh, that was so easy. I don't know why you guys talking about what you missed. It was so easy. It was, oh, it was so easy, and they get the F. How many of you guys have friends like that? Who talk all that trash, but you know, you look at them like, nah, man, you failed that test like you always do. But thanks for the effort, right? Because people, it's our habit, guys. We're socialized to not be able to be honest about our flaws and about what we don't know and about what we're uncomfortable with. And it's the same reason why these advisors try to tell you stuff and they don't know what the heck they're talking about. They absolutely do not know, but they don't want to sound unintelligent. If you ask the students who work with me, there's stuff I don't know all the time. And my answer is, ooh, I'm not really sure on that, but let me find out. And I go and actually get the correct answer. You can't just give people fake answers, but that's what advisors do. And where this came together was this weekend. So you guys all know I work at UCSD. And it's interesting because now we're big enough people who, find, who know me and follow my channel that I run into people all the time. So wherever I'm around San Diego, I run into people. So I'm at work. On Friday. And I'm going to tell you guys, this is, this is how life happens. This is the truest. Listen to this story and you'll understand exactly why certain people are successful and certain people aren't successful. And you have to figure out which of these two people you want to be. And this is the exact way I'm last week with posers and frauds and all this stuff. So I'm at work. And the way anesthesia works is you don't have a regular lunch break. You essentially just have breaks in between cases or if someone comes to get you off for a pee break, whatever you want. So I had a morning break last Friday. So I got 15 minutes, right, to go eat my food, sit down, decompress from what just happened in the operating room, and then move on. So I'm in the cafeteria, and I'm going through my head about what just happened, whatever, and someone comes up behind me, and they say, Dr. Pineset, and they, like, grab me on the shoulder and say, oh, my gosh, so good to see you. And I said, oh, hello, hey, and I'm like, I recognize the face, and then she said her name, and I was like, oh, I recognize your name, like, you know, you've been on the live stream a couple times. And she's like, oh my gosh, it's so good to see you. I knew you worked here. I volunteer here. This is so great. I'm like, awesome. And she's like, listen, I really love to sit down with you and, and, and pick your brain for a second. And if you guys ever see me out anywhere, I have no problem. I've sat down with people at SeaWorld. I sat down with people at Disneyland. Like, it's weird. You run into people. people. I'll sit down with you. I'll talk to you. For, my wife hates it. But I'll sit down and talk with you. As long as you want to talk, I'll sit down. I don't have to, like, right? I'll sit down. If you find me, it's like, where's Waldo? If you find me out in public somewhere, you can corner me and sit me down and get coaching. I don't have no problem because I'm here to help you guys, right? So she's like, listen, can you sit with me for a couple minutes? I'm like, sure. Even though I'm only 15 minutes, I sit with her. So I get my I get my eggs, I get my scrambled eggs in the morning, I get my scrambled eggs, I sit down with this girl, and we're talking. She proceeds to tell me, hey, listen, my MCAT score is terrible, and but I want to apply this year. And I said, well, what's your MCAT score? And her MCAT score was so low in her mind that she couldn't tell me. And this was the first red flag going to my mind. I knew this was going to be a bad conversation. Because if you're going to ask somebody for help, right? If you trust somebody enough to ask them for help, why would you not disclose important information that is key to advising you? And this is what happens. People try to ask for income. They ask for information but they give incomplete information. So if you don't give me the full story, how can I give you accurate and personalized advice? I can't. I cannot do it. When I do coaching, I have like a 15-page questionnaire that students have to fill out so that I understand a complete picture of what's going on. So she wouldn't tell my MCAT score. So I'm like, mm, this is going to be a rough conversation. So then it takes me like five minutes of the 15 minutes to pull her MCAT score out of her. And her MCAT score is low 490s. 
And I said, ooh, that's really low. And she says, yeah, but, you know, my GPA is good. My GPA is like, it was like 3.7, so I think I'll be okay. And I was like, no, you really won't be okay. And she's like, no, 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 I think it's going to be fine to apply this year. You know, I'm an older student. I don't want to wait any longer. I want to apply. And I said, wait, what makes you think you're going to get in with that score? I said, have you talked to anybody about this? And she said, well, I applied this past cycle. I'm actually currently applying in this cycle. And I said, well, how's it going? She's like, I haven't gotten any interviews. And I'm like, duh. I'm like, have you got any secondaries? She's like, no, I didn't get any secondaries. I said, because your MCAT score is too low, like the obvious. So she said, well, yeah, well, I've been working on it this year. I've been taking classes because I felt like I was weak in the MCAT in genetics and in psychology. So I said to her, wait a minute, time out. Your MCAT score is bad. So you've decided to take, spend the year, not studying for the MCAT, but taking coursework. She said, yes. And I said, that's a terrible idea. She said, wait, it can't be a terrible idea. My pre-med advisor told me to take these courses because they'll help on the MCAT. Genetics and psychology are on the MCAT and I struggled on these, so I should take the courses. I said, okay, let's take a step back. When did you take the MCAT? She said, I took the MCAT in June. I said, great, you took the MCAT in June, you had to go back in July, and then what'd you do? She said, I talked to my counselor, and they said, I don't know how it's gonna go this cycle for you, but you need to improve that MCAT. The way to do it is take coursework. She's graduated already. She graduated last June. So now she's paying out of pocket for these courses. She spent the last, is what, March? Eight months taking coursework volunteering, doing all this stuff. And I said, hey, why would you go take courses when your MCAT's the problem? Why wouldn't you go study and focus on the MCAT? She goes, this is helping with the MCAT because I'm taking these courses. And then I said, wait, right? And this is, if you guys have ever sat down with me, this is the logic I walk people through because it's important for you guys to understand the poor decisions you make based on poor advice you guys get. And I said, let's take a step back. How'd your MCAT studying go? So, well, I'm an English second language person. I came to this country. I said, that's great. That's wonderful. That's a challenge for you, right? It's uphill. And I said, what have you done to prepare yourself as an English second language person to do well on an English test? And she said, well, I was told that I should read magazines. How many of you guys have been told if you want to improve your MCAT reading, you guys should read magazines and read scientific journals? Right now, comment right now if you were told to read journals and to read magazines to improve your ability to read on the MCAT. Eva Russo knows. You don't ever argue with the goat, baby. You don't ever argue with me. Okay? Sam. Right? Sam was told that. Who else was told? Read journal articles. Read magazines. Read everything you can get your hands on. Just read. Read a lot. Who was told that? Let's go right now. Comment in the box. I know it's all of you guys. So everybody write that down right now. Say me. Say me. I. It was me. Right? This is what they tell you to do. Even if you're a second English person, they tell you, go read a journal, go read a magazine, go read these articles, right? That's what they tell you to do. That is horrible advice. It's awful advice. You will never improve your MCAT score reading scientific articles and reading magazines. Why? Because, right, the New Yorker, and that's the one she quoted to me, Brent. Thank you for putting that in there. She said, oh yeah, I was told to read the New Yorker and the magazines and high-end stuff, right? It's stupid. It's awful advice from people who don't know anything about cognitive science, and don't know anything about learning and how our freaking brain works. Idiots, essentially. People who tell you they know what they're talking about who don't know what they're talking about. Because what is the issue? And it's the same thing we want to talk about speed reading. Speed reading is nothing. Right? Kirill, what up? You guys have to understand the MCAT is a reading comprehension test. If you are a second language person, right? So for my non, my second language English people, the problem you have with reading and speaking English is what, right? The words come easy. You learn the words. What comes hard is meaning, phrasing, right? And the subtleties and the nuance of understanding, right? What things are indirectly implied when things aren't actually directly said it's understanding to read between the lines that's what makes right reading english on an mcat difficult for a second language person it's not the words right yes you can grow the vocab but the real issue where the points come is the comprehension when you read an article or you read a scientific journal 
The problem is, is you read all these big words, but you have no way to actually test your understanding of that material. Therefore, you can never progress your reading comprehension by reading an article, reading a journal with no assessment. There are no questions, there are no discussion tied to that writing. Therefore, you can't see if you see what's really happening. So you will never improve your MCAT score reading standalone magazine articles, New Yorker, whatever, because your brain doesn't work that way. We all see the world through a lens. So yes, you saw the New Yorker article only in your lens, but you have no confirmation, no, right? There's nothing to butt up against to say, is that correct? You only see it as a second language English person. So yes, you're like, oh yeah, I, I totally understood that New Yorker article. Yes, of course you did. You, it makes sense to you. But does that really what the article says? You have no idea. So that's not how you improve your vocabulary and English ability. Because all you're going to get are the raw words. And you can look it up in Webster's. That's great. But how do you use a word? Right? We talk about lit, sick. Right? And this seems like, oh, those are slang words. But science words are just like slang words in the sense that they're going to use these words in ways, the whole reason to write the MCAT is they write it so they use things in different contexts than you're used to, changing meanings, alternative meanings, secondary meanings, coupling it with another word to change the alter, right? A modifying verb, all these things to purposefully confuse you and make simple things difficult. And if you don't prepare properly, you can't boost your English skills. It's the same way with reading comprehension, you can't boost reading comprehension. So when then I said, okay, so, so we got into this whole discussion. We went down this road and I just yelled at her. So like I said, I'm not nice to people because I'm not here to be nice. I'm not here to spare your feelings. I'm here to get you guys into medical school. I don't like, I have no qualms of making people cry. I hope you cry and then you cry and get into medical school. That's what I hope. I hope sometimes, sometimes people need to be broken down so they can build themselves up to get to medical school. But if I walk around saying, oh, yeah, you're going to do great. Just apply with your 2.0 GPA. I'm not helping you. So I'm yelling at her, yelling at her, yelling at her. So she said, but my advisor told me that to, to do this. And I said, wait, let's take a step back now. You said the MCAT setting didn't go well. You're reading comprehension, right? Your English second language. So I said, how did you prepare? She said, oh, well, I brought Princeton Review. And I said, well, what do you think Princeton Review's prep? And she said, oh, it was just too much. There were all these books and it was just a lot of detail. I didn't feel like I needed it for the MCAT. So now I said, listen to your logic. You thought Princeton's MCAT focused books were too extensive and didn't focus in on the MCAT. Yet, under the advice of your pre-med advisor, you're now taking a generalized genetics course and a generalized psychology course, and you took a generalized other science course in preparation for the MCAT. So Princeton Review's books were too much for you to con to too much for you to handle even though they're MCAT focused, and now you're gonna take a broad ass general genetics and psychology course. And you think you're gonna get closer to the MCAT. This is the nonsense I have to deal with, that people compare me to these people at their school who pick up a check to recite the same stuff year after year, don't advance their thinking, and don't know what they're talking about and don't even know how to evaluate you and evaluate you in the totality of your picture, right? And we're gonna even add to this. I told you, she'd already graduated. She's doing this all this bad stuff. She's wasting all this time, all this stuff. She's paying out of pocket for these courses. She's taking time to do these courses. Well, it turns out, right, this student is disadvantaged. She doesn't have a lot of money to be spending on courses, yet she's paying out of pocket for those courses. Do you know what she tells me? I said, listen, you need to forget all this stuff, take the money from those classes, and get in my MCAT course. And you know what she says to me? She says, oh, I can't afford your course. I said, listen, I'm not about money. I said, you tell me what you can afford a month. You can pay me that and you can have the course. And you know, she said, ah, uh, you know, I just, I got a lot of stuff going on. You know, I, I, yeah, uh, uh, um, and you know, I don't need, this, she, this is the kicker. This is what, this is when I had to like almost get up from the table. Here's what she said. <laughs> she said, I don't want, like, I don't need a whole course. Can you just give me some tips or strategies for the MCAT? Guys, 
I don't need a whole course. Can you just give me some tips or strategies for the MCAT? Okay, sure. You got a 490-ish score. And in the next three minutes of my breakfast break, I'm going to give you the ultimate tip that's going to make you a 510 score. <laughs> like, the logic of that. Yet, right, I laugh at this and I'm mad at this, right? And people who work with me know it is my absolute, I'm thorough for a reason. Because when you're thorough in the nuances of everything, you get results. And when you guys go out there looking for superficial answers, superficial answers are what you're going to get. And what happens is and you don't even learn to recognize superficial answers because that's what you actually desire because it fits your mold. And so what I explained to her was I said, listen, I don't do that. I said, I create systems so people can be successful. I'm not interested in doing tips. You got a tip from your advisor, which was to take courses. That tip has now cost you money and time and it's going to prevent you. You cannot apply to medical school this year because you will not get in. That's what a tip cost you. And she was like, what? And I said, think about this. If I was evaluating you, I evaluate the total picture. Your pre-med advisor sits in their office. They're busy. They're overwhelmed. They don't even take a second to think about your individual case and they just spout things at you. What sense does it make if you're talking to a disadvantaged student who doesn't have a lot of money, you're talking to a student who's older, who doesn't want to take a lot of time in between when they apply next, and a student whose MCAT is absolutely unacceptable for medical school and is the only thing keeping them out because they have a 3.7 GPA? Would you advise that student to pay out of pocket, take courses to improve their MCAT score, and to solidify their GPA to compensate for the low MCAT to apply the following year. I said, your advisor said apply this year? She's like, yeah. I said, your advisor's an idiot. I said, you need at least two years because you are on a learning curve. And this is the same thing for non-traditional students. If you're an English second language student, you can't study the same amount of time as someone else. You can't ramp up your MCAT score, guys. It doesn't happen that way. I wish I could be like, listen, guys, fairy dust. You're an English second language student. You can do well on the MCAT tomorrow. No. But if you're an English second language student, I can give you a roadmap for how over time, an extended period of time, you can improve your English and then do well on the MCAT. You have to, right? It's one step, then the other step. You can't just tomorrow all of a sudden be an English speaker. It doesn't happen that way. And I was like, you need at least two years. You got to get yourself together, get this MCAT in place. You don't want to be taking it 15 times. Get it together, spend the time, and do it. And she was like, no, 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 no. And then you know what she said? And this was like when the conversation ended. She said, well, that's the same thing the dean told me. And I was like, what? And she said, oh, well, I met uh, the former uh, retired dean of the medical school here at UCSD. And he told me I need to take two years and get myself together. And I said, so your knucklehead pre-med advisor gave you bad advice. Michael, what's up? Gave you bad advice. A dean told you to wait two years. The pre-med productivity expert is telling you to wait two years. And you were going to argue with me. And you were going to ignore what the dean said. And you're going to do what you want to do. You're lost. And what's what was so funny, and this is what I'm telling you, the universe, man, if you guys pay attention, the universe brings you everything. She says that to me, and I get up from the table, and all I can think of, literally all I can think of is one of my mentees who, and I'll shout her out, because she, she might be on her, she might not be on her, I'll shout her out because I'm proud of her, is Carmen. I have a mentee whose name is Carmen. If you guys know Carmen, shout out Carmen. Say, hey, Carmen, congratulations. Because Carmen is a disadvantaged student. Carmen has a lot of obstacles. Had a lot of things she had to go through to get where she had to go. 
Her personal statement she sent me originally was terrible. But we worked on it, refined it. She said, I need to get better on the MCAT. She took my course. She said, I wanted my application tight. She took my application course. All this stuff to better herself. And Karma's known me for years. Better herself, better herself. And she comes from very meager beginnings. She's not a rich, privileged kid. She's worked her tail off, sacrificing all kinds of stuff to get it done in the classroom, to get it done outside the classroom, doing whatever she had to do, hustling, working, picking up all this stuff, getting it done. When she went to apply this year, she was like, I don't think I'm going to get in. Like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm this, I'm a minority. I'm this. She was all doubting herself. And I said, Carmen, stop. You're going to get in and you're going to get in to one of your top choices. Carmen starts to cycle. Carmen gets into her top choice medical school. Like I told her, right? Cycle progresses and literally I leave this conversation with this this knucklehead girl, and she's not an idiot. She's just, this is how we get in our own heads, right? We get in our own heads and we can't see the real from the fake because the fog makes us feel good. It's cozy not to know we're headed for a cliff. That fog, y'all, is beautiful. Look at this beautiful fog. And then you're off the cliff and you're dead. Your medical school hopes are dead. That's how it goes. And Carmen, so I leave that conversation with that girl, and then Carmen sends me a text, and she's like, hey, I gotta talk to you, can you talk? I said, yeah, call me right now. So on my next break, <laughs> I say, call me right now, I'm available. And I talked to Carmen, and it turns out that Carmen got a ginormous, not a little one, a ginormous four-year scholarship to her top choice medical school. And it made me almost want to cry. Even when she got in, it made me almost want to cry. And then when she got that offer, it made me want to cry for her. And it was it was the exact universe bringing things together. And I came home and told my wife, and my wife's a softy. Like, I don't real cry. Like, I'm, I'm hard. But my wife's a softy. And she was like, oh, my gosh. Like, she was, like, emotional. Because she knows how hard Carmen's been working with me to get stuff done. And how much she's battled through. How much she's overcome. Right? And so... Her getting this scholarship has nothing to do with me. That's not what this video is about. Nothing. Because even if Carmen wasn't with me, she would get this scholarship money. But it's the people who choose to not be comfortable, to not live in the fog, who choose to work with me. It's an associative thing. right? If you have the mindset to work with me, you have the mindset to work hard. You have the mindset of no excuse, just dominate. You're going to get there. Get there. So Carmen is phenomenal in her own right. It's not about me, but the story is these two people who are disadvantaged, who are English second language, who have to work and do school and all these excuses of why they wouldn't be able to succeed. And Carmen's getting crazy scholarship dough to her top choice medical school. And this student is going to apply a second time and get no secondaries and no interviews a second time because it, Mark just said it all in. All in. Your pre-med advisors aren't all in. I'm all in, guys. It's 8 o'clock over here, and I'm with you guys instead of hanging out with my wife. I'm all in. And these pre-med advisors are not all in. And some of you cats are not all in, and it drives me bananas. And true story, guys, I hate doing generalized public stuff a lot of times because... I like working with my students. That's why we're going to do a lot more exclusive webinars for my courses because I like working with the students who are with me because we all have the same mentality. We're all rolling together in the same direction. And I feel like, like I did a, a live stream on YouTube last week and I was like, this is exactly why I don't go live on YouTube because I'm getting studentdoctor.net type trollish stuff where people are asking troll type questions. And I'm like, ooh, it makes me allergic to people who aren't working hard. And Carmen has worked for everything she's got and she's making me so proud. She made me so proud. I slept so good Friday night because someone puts in time. I just, I can't stress that enough. All in, doing whatever it takes, hustling to every opportunity, work hard in the classroom, work on your MCAT, grinding through all of it. And you guys know me, I specialize in minority and disadvantaged students. So most of my students come from meager beginnings. But the students who are successful and will reach higher than anyone ever are the people who put the time in and are invested. 
You can't be listening to idiot pre-med advisors, guys. You can't do it. You can't be on studentdoctor.net acting like that's real life. People are anonymous, trolls, garbage, terrible people. And it's so important, guys. You guys have to do your due diligence for knowing about medical school, for knowing about the MCAT, for knowing about all this stuff. Take your freaking time. Don't invest money with people on the internet that you don't know. If you've never seen their face, if you've never heard them talk, like, it's easy to put together a five-minute promo and sound fancy. I challenge everybody, tell your friends, don't get that program from Mr. No Name on the internet who can't back any of this ish up. You can't back any of this ish up. If, like, you know what I mean? You guys got to verify. You got to have more than one. Uh, everybody who works with me, I tell you, listen to me, yes. And at this point, really, I could be your all-in-one. But one of the, the greatest testimonies I ever got was from my man Paris. And he was on here earlier. I don't know if he's still on here. But he said one of the first things that he remembers me telling him that's really served him well was, yes, I'm your mentor, but don't let me be your last mentor. And what he wrote in the testimony was that he was my first mentor, Dr. Pinesett was, but he was not my last because he told me, don't let me be your last. And this is what I always tell you guys. You guys got to have a, a group, a consortium around you to vet stuff. And that's what I like. I'm trying to work hard to solidify our community and our group to have a platform where we can really support each other because there's a bunch of trolls and bull manure salesmen out here who are trying to rip your medical school dreams from you because they don't give a rat's tail about how much money it's costing you, how much a dollar means to you guys. How many of you guys out there would consider you guys self-broke students? How many of you guys, like, $5, you got to think about that $5. Like, mm, can I spend that $5 here? When you got to think about when you go to the store. And not everybody respects that. Not everybody understands that you're running around. You only have five minutes left in your day. They don't understand what five minutes of free time would mean to you. They don't understand all the responsibilities, obligations, everything you have to do. And they don't respect your time. They make you sit in seminars that are a waste of time to give you five minutes worth of information in 60 minutes. You travel somewhere and the opportunity is not what it should be. You go volunteer at the hospital and they don't show you any hospital stuff. You go to shadow a doctor and they got you standing outside the office instead of inside the office. You're going to run into people who don't respect your time and your money. You have to be hyper vigilant about as soon as like you get an inkling that someone doesn't respect the fact that $5 is a lot of money to me. $5 is a lot of money to me. I understand that wholeheartedly. Yes, I have courses that are $500. They are expensive. Woo, $500, a lot of money. But one of the greatest quotes that one of my mentors ever said to me, ever said to me in my whole life, I, I, if you guys take nothing from this, Forget everything I've told you now, but listen to this one thing. And this guy's one of the wealthiest people in like the world. This guy's multi, 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 hundred million bajillionaire. Like kind of guy who owns multiple planes, multiple boats type stuff. And he's my mentor. And one of the greatest things he ever said to me, I was like, whoa, that's deep. Is he said, judge things not by how expensive or how cheap they are, but by the value you gain. I'm not, and he said, I'm not just talking about possessions. I'm talking about people. He goes, I don't have a lot of people in my circle because everybody in my circle has to bring value to me. I was like, hmm. He's like, being easy to hang out with doesn't allow you to be in my circle. Because easy to hang out with is the equivalent of cheap. Cheap, free, it sounds great. But oftentimes, people who are easy to come are easy to go. And what I want is value. When I go to invest in something, he's like, he's like I put out million dollar investments into properties and different things. And he's like, you know what the key to, people in real estate try to look for the cheap deal, that cheap house that they can fix up and it's gonna sell for millions. And he says, when you buy a $20,000 house, at most, let's say you double the value of the house, like, which never happens, you can make 20000 
He's like, but if you spend 200000 on a house and you fix it up 10%, you can make that same 20000 But if you fix it up 20%, you can make double that. You can make 40000 So he's like, you invest, and then the value of the house is what determines if I invest or not. And when you guys evaluate things in, in your whole lives and everything, it's about value. And when I charge a $500 course, that's why I'm constantly, right, I'm trying to update the courses, I'm trying to bring more things, because I care about adding value to you guys. Value. It's not about being expensive or being cheap. It's about value. The free MCAT webinar coming up. I could have done a 30-minute free webinar. It could have been like, the MCAT is on a scale from 400 and something to 525. The MCAT is a multi-hour test which covers these subjects. I don't cover any of that. I don't cover any of that. Because that's the same generic crap that your pre-med advisors give you and pretend like they're giving you valuable information. I'm giving you two hours and we don't talk about the MCAT score scale. We don't talk about the setup of the MCAT. We talk about strategy. From moment one, strategy. How we getting at it. How we doing it. Let's get it. Because I want two hours, even if it's free, I want to be like, I want you to be like, dang, I would have paid like a thousand for this, even though it's free. That's value. And when you guys, the other flip side of this, right, is judge things by value, but make yourself valuable. So often, right, we try to, like, people focus on trying to make themselves look expensive or be expensive, right? Like, so what I mean by that is, Everybody, who knows these people? You might be, this might be you. You might be this person where you run around and you got 15 activities, right? Who has a friend who's in every single club on campus yet can attend no meetings because they're in so many clubs and can have, hold no position because there's so many clubs and can make no difference because there's so many clubs. How many of you guys have friends like that where they're involved in every activity, but they make no difference. They make no impact. They provide no value to anybody. They're the busybody. When you are a pre-med, if you want to get into medical school, you don't have to do everything. You just have to do you really well. Be valuable. And that's why I commend Carmen because she's made herself valuable. She brings value to the table. Her application, she had lots of stuff on there. But more importantly was the value she brought to everything she did. Exactly, Meryl. Butter over too much bread. Right? What's what's the what's the quote? <laughs> all that all that frosting, no cake, something like that. Like you, you got all that, but where's the value? And when people see your value, they'll reward that and they'll be there for you. And you guys have to be very critical judges of what's valuable to you. Both in terms of how you spend your time, how you spend your money, and who you put around you. Because there are snakes in the grass out here who are waiting. They would love to see you fail. It's like LeBron, guys. We talk about, right, LeBron. Everybody loves seeing LeBron lose right now and struggle with the Cavaliers. Why? Because LeBron is the greatest player in the NBA right now. And greatness makes us uncomfortable because we don't think that we are great ourselves. And so we hate greatness. And so we love it when the big guy gets knocked off the throne. We love the David and Goliath story. Oh, yeah, he thought he was so great. He got smacked down. We love it when the person that we think is great comes down. We love that. Why? Because we don't feel like we can reach up there and take greatness ourselves. Don't let people steal your greatness because they're weak. Don't let pre-med advisors steal your greatness because they couldn't be great. They're sitting in an office as a counselor because they couldn't get into medical school. Oh, yeah, when I was a pre-med, well, did you get to medical school? No, you didn't. Oh, okay, but you're advising me on how to get to medical school. And I'll end this by saying this. We talk about imposters and your pre-med advisors don't know anything. And I'll actually, you know, this one I'll put the link out because this thing is important. I'll maybe, I'll think about it. There's a guy who has a website, and I watch all this stuff, right? And he ripped off, he tried to rip off some of my stuff. He came to one of my talks, tried to pass it off as his own, tried to create a little, a little seminar out of it, whatever. And I was like, no, nah, that's mine again. Thank you, though. But what happens is, is he had a whole website talking about, I'll get you into Ivy League medical school. I'll get you into Ivy League medical school. I'll get you into Ivy League medical school. I'm an Ivy League medical student. I'm an Ivy League medical student. I'm an Ivy League medical student. 
and all through the stuff he said this, but he wouldn't say where he was, what, what mental he was at, what his name was, and all that stuff. So I always write, I'm thorough. Do some research. It turns out this guy didn't get into medical school. Didn't get into an Ivy League school. He actually was taking extension coursework at an Ivy League school, and then dropped that program, and then started a PhD program at another school, and then dropped that program. So he's in no school, and now he has a website telling people that I got into an Ivy League school, and I'll get you an Ivy League school. And he had testimonials, and the testimony, one of the faces looked familiar to me, and I was like, ooh, that person looks familiar to me. Why looks familiar to me? Well, it turns out that person was an Adobe stock photo. And I know that because I have a description of Adobe stock photos. And I was like, oh, that's the same stock photo I saw. So he had fake testimonials about students who were going to Ivy League schools. And then he was talking about how he was an Ivy League student. He didn't show people. And he was charging $2,500 for advice. And it's not the cost of that advice. Whatever. People pay $200. It's fine. But the point is, is what's the value in someone who's going to lie to you from start to finish? Because he wants to make a quick buck. Because he doesn't want to tell you what he doesn't know. And it's important, guys. I can't stress this enough. Stop listening to people who don't know what they're talking about. You don't have to only listen to me. But be very clear about who knows what they're talking about and who doesn't. Do you guys understand what I'm saying right now? Are you guys still with me? Are you hanging here with me? I meant this to be like a five-minute stream, but it's blossomed this because I get so fired up because it really makes me upset because you guys don't know how many emails I get from people who don't have a lot of money and get scammed by people who are just out here stealing people's money. I don't understand. Like, this guy on StudioArt.net is going to badmouth me for four comments and then say, I've never spent a dime on prep yet. And the following said, say, I just bought Dr. Pine's $50 course and it was bomb. But uh, it was only because his YouTube videos were like cool and whatever. Like, how do you let someone, how is that legitimate? How do you let somebody talk out of both sides of their mouth and everybody acts like that's common sense? And like when my student sent this over to me, he's like, you should respond. And I'm like, I have no interest in getting on SuperDoc.net ever. If you ever see a post from me on SuperDoc.net, it ain't me. Someone has again taken my likeness and made a profile. I will never come on Sudar.net because I will not promote and propagate shenanigans. 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 And what's very unfortunate, I'll tell you guys one more thing. You guys want to hear one more thing? Can I say one more thing and then we'll get out of here? You guys want to hear one more thing? Tell me, let me know right now if you want to hear one more thing. One more thing you want to hear? One more thing. How many of you guys have been to a conference and you've seen the conference is sponsored by Kaplan or the Princeton Review or some other big commercial company? How many of you guys have been to a conference and seen that? How many of you guys have been in a Facebook group or been in this group or been in a club at school and you get your club president that says, hey, I was talking to Princeton Review and I got us this thing where we can get 20% off of the course uh, if you guys do this course. And what's very important, and what I want to say about this is very important. What you guys don't recognize is that when people do this to you, they don't always have your best interest in heart. Because what happens is, is these companies contact your club president and say, hey, we'll give you free access to this course if you get everyone in your club to buy this, this course. And so that president has never taken this course, knows nothing about this course, doesn't know if it's good for you, yet they're recommending it. That's what happens. When Kaplan and Prince Review sponsor these conferences, so what was so interesting was when I first came out, I was trying to get keynotes. And I couldn't get keynotes. Why? Because conferences were saying, listen, Kaplan is going to give 15000 to have their one of their people in their company be the keynote. Or they're willing to pay 15000 to get their puppet, who's a professor from somewhere, to get up here and talk about Kaplan as the keynote. What can you give us to get the keynote? And I said, I'm not paying you a dime to keynote. I said, if you want to defraud your students who pay good money to come to this conference and have a sponsored keynote, right? They're being put up there by this company to talk good about this company. That's weak. 
It's awful. You guys blanket this conference with Kaplan, with Princeton Review, with no regard to whether that's a good product for your students. No regard. And if you guys know, I have an affiliate program. So right, I said I have a lot of students who don't have a lot of money. I said, hey, listen, tell people about my courses and you can make commission off that. Absolutely. But do you know what one of the criteria is for being in my affiliate? You have to be in my courses. You have to have completed the course to be able to recommend it to other people. Because how can you advise people that they should take my course if you haven't taken my course? How can you tell me how to get to medical school if you've never done it? Moreover, more importantly, how can you tell me to get to medical school if you've never told anybody else how to get to medical school? If a medical student approaches you and says, hey, I'll teach you how to get to medical school, they can be a tertiary advisor. They can do small supplemental hints and this and that and that. They can't be your primary advisor because they don't have any sample size. They don't know what they're talking about. I guarantee you. Why? Because I do workshops with medical students. Guys, I do workshops with medical students. They don't know how to study any better than you do. They're lost. They're lost. This fall, so right, I, right, I've been, I talk about prioritizing folks on your energies. I've been focused on pre-med. You guys can see this fall, I'm doing a bunch of medical schools this fall. Teaching step one, teaching step two, teaching them studying for their courses, teaching them how to get through clerkships efficiently. I'm going to be teaching medical students. Why? Because they don't know what they're doing. And that's why medical school is so difficult for people because they don't have any idea. They have no study skills. And it was the coolest thing, right? And it's moments like this that I love when I see students be successful is that I had Utham and, uh, and Richard out at my uh, UC Irvine, or Utham came back, actually started to my UC Irvine talk. And Utham is in my study course. And we did studying at this UC Irvine event and there was a bunch of medical students that were there. And after the session, we sat down with the medical students and they're like, man, I wish I would have found you more medical school. Like, it's been really hard this year. And whoa, 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 like, uh, like, but do you have courses? I'm like, yeah, of course, get my study course. And a bunch of them enrolled in my study courses, medical students. And I'm getting messages from the medical students after that, like, hey, man, this five post course is awesome. Like, blah, blah, blah. you should come to our school. I said, well, actually, I am coming to your school. Your dean invited me. I'm coming to your school in the fall to teach you guys how to study. But the whole point is, is these students are in medical school. These students are in the medical school clubs that advise you pre-meds. These are the people that are telling you they know everything. They don't know anything. Anything, guys. They don't know how to study. And Richard was at UCSD. And Richard had to sit through an hour-long presentation of this UCSD employee. And right, it's whatever. Right, Every school has bad advisors. But he was a UCSD employee who gets paid to advise students who's on the board talking about the application and it was the most remedial thing I've ever seen. And Richard was like, I could teach that. I was like, yes, of course you could because you're on a high level stuff. We do a high level over here. Gosh, drives me freaking bananas. Don't listen to medical students. They don't know what they're talking about. It's amateur hour. Don't do it. Do not do it. Don't listen to someone who's in medical school. Yeah, Richard said I had to constantly correct that guy. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I was sitting in the back, like, grabbing my hand. I'm like, they get this guy an hour. That's why I don't go. Like, I don't do a lot of conferences. I'll do some as a keynote, whatever. But I hate doing, like, a lot of these conferences because it's hot garbage that they make you sit through these conferences and you guys think you're getting good advice and they don't know what they're talking about. Even deans give bad advice. Why? Because they only see the application from their side. But they don't see the steps it takes to get there. It would be like someone staying on the far side of a canyon, right? And they can't see there's a canyon, right? And they're standing there. They see you on the other side of the canyon. And they say, hey, I'm right here. Just walk across. Just walk to me. I can see you. But they don't see there's a big canyon that you're about to fall into. That's what some deans are like. They're over here like, oh, just go buy an expensive prep class. Oh, just go volunteer more. Well, hey, Dean, I have to work. I'm broke. Oh, oh, okay. Well, uh, why don't you uh, just get straight A's? Like, I've never gotten an A in my whole life. Now you want me to get straight A's? Like, it's not commonsensical because they don't understand how to get you there. They, just had to, they know how to tell you how you're not there. Come on, get there. Like, 
it drives me bananas, guys, because all of you guys can get to medical school. It takes, it, it's, it's, there's not, there's nothing special about it other than your willingness to work hard and work right. Getting A's is not anything special other than studying hard and more so studying smart. But I tell people, they try to get in my five pillars course. I tell them right at the, I'll tell my five pillars course out of all my courses. This ain't for you if you want magic wand studying. This is for you, Morty, what's up? If you want to take these strategies and put them to work. I can tell you all the right things, but if you don't work it, it ain't worth anything. It's worth nothing. Right? And Troy just hit it on the head. My favorite is when people give you mediocre advice to make themselves sound brilliant. To do well in the MCAT, one of the best things to do is take practice tests. Exactly. I kid you guys not. So, right? So I comb the internet just to see what's out there. Just like, because, so, right? We, we, right? we can be honest, right? We can be real here. We can all be honest. This is going way over, but we all feel insecure sometimes. So the other day I was like, let me just do a reality check. Maybe since the last time I combed the internet, someone is teaching studying well. Right? And my students will ask me all the time, hey, what do you think of this person? And I'll go look at it and I'm like, this is legit, this is not legit. And there's very few legit people talking about studying out there. A lot of people just regurg regurgitate stuff. And so I was out there looking because someone said, hey, this guy has great study stuff too. You should tell your students about him. So before I recommend anything to you guys, I always do my research. So I go out and I watch a ton of this guy's videos. I then go out, put my money where my mouth is, right? And I bought this guy's book. I bought the book. And I have a Kindle now, so it's fantastic. I can, I can read it electronically. I go out and I bought this guy's book. I paid my $11 to buy this guy's book. And guys, I won't say who it is, but I wrote back to my student. I said, don't ever listen to a single one of his videos again. Because he does what, who was just saying it? What Troy was just saying. Mediocre advice to sound smart. I'm reading his book. And this guy has broken the book into about a hundred different sections. And each section is based on a definition he probably read somewhere on the internet. The Pomodoro technique. The uh, spaced retrieval. Uh, uh, active recall. And then he describes what it means, the definition. And I'm like, this? This is your guys' guru? This? This guy who incorrectly described the Pomodoro effect, he gave me the definition from the dictionary and then, or from Wikipedia, I'm sorry, he cited Wikipedia, and then he couldn't even explain it properly in the example. And I look at the Amazon reviews of this guy's book and everybody's like, this is the greatest, this is amazing, change my life, change my life, change my life. I'm like, because he said Pomodoro technique? And I love it. The Pomodoro technique comes up all the time. People, hey, well, do you, uh, <laughs> you think you know about studying? Do you know about the Pomodoro technique? And I'm like, oh, oh, oh the Pomodoro technique. I'm like, I'll tell you what. Tell me how you use the Pomodoro technique. Tell me how you use the Pomodoro technique. And to a fault, everybody cannot actually tell me how they implement it. Or if they tell me, I'm like, wrong, wrong, wrong. Yeah, I ain't doing it right. Because you got that cookie cutter definition, yet you don't know how to execute it. And that's the problem. Where's the execution? Anybody can sound smart. I don't use fancy words because I know what I'm talking about. We about action around here. Action. Getting stuff done. If I spout a bunch of fancy words, it means nothing. Zora, don't worry about it. It ain't nothing. You're actually, Zora, you're in two of my courses. I don't know which ones. Zora's in my course. If you're in five pillars, you know what the Pomodoro technique is. But we don't call it the Pomodoro Technique because we execute around these parts. <laughs> there you go, Joseph. <laughs> so I said it right. Right After I said that, it's in the Five Pillars course, but it doesn't have a name because it's all about how to use it. It's not what it is. Who cares? I don't need to sound smart. I need to teach you guys actionable stuff you can get better on. That's what it's about. I can get on here and I can admit my faults and I can be real with you guys because if I'm not real, I've lost. 
Yes, I can win followers, right? And I had a conversation with one of my mentees the other day who's big on social media and he's trying to do his business thing and goes in and I said, listen, you have to decide because it's hard to do both. It's like, you can have lot. I'm like, you can have lots of followers or you can be real and you can help people. You can have lots of followers or you can be real and you can help people. That's your decision point. And what's beautiful, right? And I told him, I said, you have to think about it this way. It's easy now with the internet to be viral, to be internet sensation, and to get a million followers, a million likes, whatever. My question is, what happens next week? You have to decide in business. This is for you guys. This is an important lesson. This video, we're getting a lot of stuff here. In business, the number one thing you guys have to decide, when you go start a business, you have to say, is this a cash grab or is this a long-term play? Is this a cash grab or is this a long-term play? What you find in the pre-med space is a lot of people want to do a cash grab. They say, oh, yeah, I'll put this website up. I'll advertise uh, advice and I'll charge people $8,000. <laughs> I'll take the cash. And they get the cash, they don't deliver, and they're gone in six months. Right? How many defunct YouTube channels do you guys see? Right? YouTube, right? They just said it, clickbait, and then they don't deliver anything. Right? Grab the cash, don't deliver anything. Or you can think long-term where you can be real, you can help people, and it'll be a slower grow. Because people don't like real. Real doesn't go viral. My videos don't go viral because we're talking about real actionable stuff. It's not gimmicky. I don't have images coming in. I don't have sound effects. I'm not <laughs> you know, zany. I'm not doing parody music. I'm bringing you guys advice. So it doesn't go viral. That's the route I chose. Be real, have an impact, get stuff done. That's what I've decided. And I told them, I said, you, can, you gotta decide. And what happens is, it's like with pre-med. Everybody wants to rush and apply. Well, you can rush and apply, that's the cash grab. But then you're gonna lose out in medical school. Or you can take your time, be real, do it right, put the work in, and steady grow and steady improve with your MCAT scoring, with your extracurriculars, and then you get into medical school. That's the long-term prize. So with my business, I said, no, 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 no. It's gonna be all real, all whatever, and if people don't like it, they don't have to follow me. And I take it as a source of pride that I'm slow growing. That people don't all flock to me. Why? Because that means I'm bringing that truth. And Tishna said it right. People can't handle that truth. People can't handle it. It makes me feel great. When people send me hate mail, I love it. Because that means I'm striking people's nerves. Ooh, Right? I got today, right? Today's match day. So you know people search on match day, right around match time. And if you guys don't know what match time is, so medical school, medical students, <laughs> medical students apply to residency and they all find out on one day if they match or not, right? And they're like, oh my God, I've got match into this. And the very first part of match week is Monday and it's, it's match Monday. It's also called the scramble Monday. And what happens is you find out, you get an email and it says, you have matched. Didn't tell you where. Or you get an email that says, you didn't match. Start scrambling. And the scramble is for everyone who doesn't get a match, they then have to look at what residency programs didn't fill and make phone calls and try to get into that program into those empty slots. And today, right, I told you the universe brings you everything. So today's match day, all the stuff's happening over the weekend. And then I come in this morning and one of my attendings is on the phone. This is exactly how it goes. She had a mentee. She told him, right, he was an older student, he had worked as an anesthesia tech. She told him, Hey, yeah, you're an anesthesia tech, you're older. Yeah, you could take some time and get into a medical, an American medical school, but just go to the Caribbean. You go to the Caribbean, and then you have my connect, and you can come back here in America, no problem. So they were an anesthesia tech, they won't go to anesthesia. They go to the Caribbean, today's match day, she's on the phone calling all these universities because her mentee, who she told, listen, you're an older student, go to the Caribbean, I'll hook you up. She couldn't even get this guy an interview at our program because we don't interview Caribbean grads, period. I don't care if you run a Nobel Prize. If you went to the Caribbean, you can't come to UCSD. Donut. Zero Caribbean graduates at UCSD. It don't happen. Our program director will not allow it. You cannot come. We won't even invite you. We reject your email. It bounces back like spam. Boop, boop. Incorrect address. You can't even reach us. 
So she's on the phone scrambling for her mentee because he couldn't even get an interview here, let alone get in here, and then didn't match anywhere else and is in the scramble. Yet today I'm getting messages about my Caribbean video still. Caribbean medical schools, you can't lump St. George in there with the rest of the medical schools. I have a friend who went to Caribbean and got into medical school and got into residency. Like, guys, I'm glad you know one person. I'm glad you know the one person who escaped from the Caribbean and came back to an American medical school, the American residency that was not internal medicine. I'm glad. It's not impossible. I never said it was impossible. But it is a thousand times harder to get a residency from a Caribbean medical school. And anybody, this is our new test, my people. If you guys want to figure out if someone can give you advice, right? If you're looking for another mentor, first question I should ask would be, listen, what do you think of Caribbean schools? And if they don't say Caribbean schools are a harder route, I want you to run away, kick them in the shin, and then run away as fast as you can. Because if they don't know that, they don't know jack. It's common freaking sense. It's an absolute scary movie. And I feel horrible because the guy she's talking about is brilliant, is smarter. is smarter than me probably. But he only get a shot because he chose to shortcut. He chose to money grab. He chose that path. Like the girl I sat down with in the cafeteria. Chose that path. He didn't do it the Carmen way. So you got to decide. Do you want to be Carmen or do you want to be cafeteria girl? That's the, re the new title of this video is Carmen or Cafeteria Girl. You have to make a decision. Are you going to be real, be honest, or are you going to sleep in the fog? When I say fog, you know what I think of? Who's a DMX fan? I'm a huge DMX fan. The snake, the rat, the cat, the dog. How are you going to see them if you're living in the fog? The snake, the cat, the rat, the dog. How are you going to see them if you're living in the fog? Truth. How are you going to see the snake? How are you going to see that rat? When that advisor is nibbling the crumblets off you, you can't see it because you're in the fog. I encourage you guys, wake up. Take charge of your lives and stop letting people lead you through the fog to your death. Be Carmen. Let me be proud of you guys. I'm not proud for me. If you guys look at my website, you see no testimonial from Carmen. I'm proud for her. Because it's her hard work. It's her decision to say, listen, I'm coming up short. I'm coming up short. Help me. And anybody who's with me knows. Like I had Entias testing me today. If you're with me and you're willing to work hard, I'll work hard for you. We can hustle. We can scrap together. But if you're not willing to work hard, I have very little tolerance for you. If you're not Carmen, she's at the bar. Paris, right? And I mention these names because the people who come around, Paris drove all the way to my house multiple times. When I was in NorCal, I stayed at my place. When I'm down here, he came down here twice to come do interview prep. To get it hard, get it ready. Ready. Right? Meryl has emailed me 50 times probably in the last two weeks. And I haven't had a chance to get back to her, but I see her name pop up in my notifications. And she's going to keep emailing me because she wants help. And I'm going to be more than willing to bend over backwards to give Meryl whatever she needs because she always contacts me. I know my peeps. I recognize my people. Kasim is always on here. From day one, Kasim has always been on here. If Kasim needs help, I'm helping Kasim. And I'm not singling anybody out, but do you guys understand what I'm saying? It's not about taking people's money. It's about providing value. It's about giving you guys real advice and not bull malarkey. If you are with bull, you're not with me. If you're not Carmen, you're going to be weeded out very quickly. Very quickly. And I have no problem. I have a no refund policy. 
but I have no problem giving people money back. Not because they asked for it, because I'm like, listen, it ain't working. You ain't nothing. You're lazy. Take your money back. I truthfully, even though I spent hours and hours preparing this, I don't want to ever have to hear from you again because you bring my you bring my vibe down. What's that Kendrick Lamar? B word, don't kill my vibe. That's what people be killing my vibe. And she was killing my vibe in the cafeteria. I'm trying to enjoy my scrambled eggs. It was the nastiest scrambled eggs I ever tasted because you put a bad taste in my mouth. Don't kill my vibe. Be about yourself. Invest in yourself. I can't, man, get it done. Because I want to be proud of you guys. Because it's a proud moment for me when I see somebody who shouldn't have succeeded, succeed. Because I've been there and I know what it is not to, to feel like, man, everything is against me, guys. Everything. I don't have the freaking money. I don't have the freaking time. I don't have the freaking support. I don't know what I'm freaking doing. I'm lost and you're emotional and you cry. Who's ever just been in their car and turned the music on and hit that cry button? Who's ever done that? You just bring your car just like, oh, I wish a tornado would come right now. Take this, pick this car up and take me to Oz. And just who's ever been in the car and had one of those moments where you're like, I can't even go in the building. Oh gosh, this is the day. <gasps> oh, like, who's ever had that moment? I know what that moment is because I've been there. And I'm telling you guys, I root for you. I root for you. <laughs> Okay, you just broke a serious moment right there, Brent. Said put on the Take Care Drake album. <laughs> That's funny, right? We can laugh at our, at our pain. Brent said throw on that Take Care Drake album. <laughs> That's so good. That is so real, right? So, Alicia said, I'm a pre-nurse. I literally had one today. It's only my first semester. <laughs> <laughs> David said Marvin's room. <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. Drake is awesome, by the way. But you guys are ridiculous. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, you know, Miss Me When I'm Gone is my song. I've been it all the time. Miss me when I'm gone. You know it, right? Man. Right? And this is beautiful. We can all get out here and share. And I encourage you guys, be on the lookout. We're going to, my community, we're going to open it up. And we're going to a new platform. I finally found one. I, you guys know I upgrade the platform that we're on for group coaching like every other week. But I finally found one. This is going to be the last change. And we're on it. But I, I care about you guys. Like my students are like my family. Like people thought I was joking. So I sent out a message earlier this year. I said, hey, you guys want to do a, a potluck at my house? And uh, I'm like, I'll, I'll barbecue. I'll put some food together. We can lecture, hang out. Like you guys come crash at my house. And people thought that was crazy. And like some people are like, yeah, I'm down for it, whatever. Like people are like, I'm not even there, but like, whatever. Like, but it's like, I feel that way. Like, why can't I invite you to my house? If you're crazy, I'm big enough, I'll beat you up. But if you're not crazy, come hang out with me. Like, we, we're, we're people. Like, what's the big deal? We're supposed to be a premium part of your family. We're supposed to be together. We should be able to break bread. You should be able to come over here, hang out with my kids. You should be okay. Like, that's okay. It's all right. I got couch space. Right? We can, we all, right? If everybody got a sleeping bag, bring a sleeping bag. We roll up in here. It's all good. Literally. <clears throat> so I had a bunch of buddies come, come down and everybody just put sleeping bags out. We would just chill. And that's the way I feel about you guys. And that's what I'm trying to say. It matters to me that you guys succeed. It matters to me that you guys get there. That's what I'm talking about. If you're with me, I'm with you. And we're with each other. We're together. I've, I've, I've gone on long enough. Now I'm leaving. Did everybody get something out of the stream tonight? There was a lot of meat in there, I feel like. Probably a lot of gristle, too, because I just get on these rants. But I hope you guys found some meat in this however long we've been on here. I don't have a problem. If you guys are coming to San Diego, hit me up. If you're one of my students, come sit down. Like You know what I mean? Like I try to make as much time as I can for people. Come sit down. I don't like, I, I, if I can do it, I sit down with, with anybody who wants to come out who's with me. That's what I'm saying. All right. Now, the MCAT webinar is Sunday. You better be at that webinar or Saturday. It's going to be off the freaking hook. Additionally, if you're at that webinar 
at that webinar, I will be announcing, you will have the first opportunity to enroll in my medical school application webinar, which is free the following week. That's going to sell out lickety split. Lickety, lickety split. It's a perk of being there. Go there. We're going to have giveaways, discounts, fun stuff. And like always, we're going to laugh and have a good time. And I'm actually going to show my face on this webinar. Show my face. I'll be fastly shaved. Show my face. Um, but I'm excited for it. But I got to go. It's late. We've been on a long time. And I apologize. But it, it, it really irks me when people are lazy. It irks me when people are lazy. Whether it's your advisors, whether it's you, whether it's whatever. Don't be lazy. Go get it done. Add value to this world. Seek value in this world. Zach said, can it be on the 25th? Actually, it might have to be next Sunday because I think I actually work next Saturday. So we'll see what's up. So Zach, maybe we'll be able to account, account for you. <laughs> Mark said, put on the party shoes for the webinar. All right. All right, I've got to go, guys. Thank you, guys. We're out of here. Oh, I got to say the website, right? The website is www.premanprotv.com. Sign up for a course. Stop. Sign up for a course. Value. Later. <laughs>